Hey, it's a Sunday morning and it seems like a good time for some finger picking and I wanted to share with you my ongoing exploration of using a thumb pick which I should mention I've never really used before since about a year ago a little bit more than that I've been messing with it and in the last six months I've been practicing more and more with the thumb pick and getting more comfortable um, bear in mind I play guitar for 36 years I studied classical guitar seriously for 10 I was always used to using the bare thumb, but I cannot maintain a thumbnail on here anyway because I keep chopping it off. And I don't really perform finger style very much. It's just not part of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. So my finger style is good for teaching and recording sessions and things like that. But in terms of doing it on stage, it's just not something I was ever that comfortable with um, for more than a song, say. But I've developed an interest in it again, and particularly in the thumb style, your Chet Atkins, Merle Travis kind of style, which is way ahead of what I'm dealing with in this particular video. But the reason that I started playing with the thumb pick was to explore more of that. Um, also watching players like Jerry Reed, whose technique is completely in its own place, and go watch videos of Jerry Reed to see what I'm talking about. Um, there's a wonderful one of, of Jerry Reed and Chet Atkins playing together, which is really interesting to look at the difference between their two styles. One of the things about a thumb pick is that it took me a while to find one that really was comfortable. And so what I'm using right here is a Fred Kelly slick pick. This is a medium. And they come in two varieties. There is this, which is your standard, um, standard plastic, I guess. And then this, which is the Delrin. And I like them both. Here's the difference in the sound. Here's the standard. I like this a little better. Is a little bit warmer. So in any case, the thing I like about the Kelly picks is that the point is not quite as long, but the other big discovery for me, and bear in mind, there are thumb players, thumb pick stylists out there who are so good at this and do it like breathing. And if you really want an authority on this, then go watch some of their videos. Check out my buddy Toby Walker, who's just absolutely amazing. Um, and a very good teacher as well. And he told me that he'd been playing with his thumb so long that it just went on its own. He didn't even think about it anymore. The actual thumb style, the Travis pick, is something that I've known how to do for a, a very long time. I learned this from my first guitar teacher years ago, including how to do some of this. But in terms of really getting the style right, you need the thumb pick to get that. At least I do. I know players that use a bare thumb and get just as much bite out of the thumb stroke. So, you know, I always have to, to qualify when talking about technique that you are always going to find people that can do things differently. And as I said, this is my own exploration. And so hopefully if you're learning about this, you're learning along with me. And so anything I say about the thumb pick is not meant to be authoritative other than my own observations. But the single biggest thing that I've noticed is that if I wear the pick further down on my thumb, almost to the joint, then A, I'm a lot more comfortable negotiating the control of the pick. And number two, it forces you to use the entire thumb to move from back here which ultimately is a much stronger position, and I feel a lot more controlled. It also allows you to mute bass strings, so if you want to rest the heel of the hand back here, and if 
you're really doing the Travis style properly, you do need to be able to mute the basses, which is the other reason I started using the thumb pick, because trying to do that, at least from my hand, without it, with the thumb in so much closer, is very uncomfortable and just doesn't work very well for me. Now, I'm not muting all the time, and it's more appropriate for some songs than for others. It's a matter of artistic choice and taste and all. So this example I'm going to give you right now is not muted. And this is the main guitar part from Guy Clark's Let Him Roll. And if you're not familiar with Guy Clark, Texas singer-songwriter, huge influence on a lot of Texas writers, lived in Nashville most of his career, but never left Texas behind in his work. And um, just wonderful story songs about real people. Passed away a few years back. And this is a good example of the way that a sort of Texas folk slash country player might approach something like this. So it's not as flashy and uh, ragtimey as a Merle Travis, uh, not chicken picking like Jerry Reed, but there are there's a relationship between what I'm doing here and that style. So this is a great place to get started. It's in the key of C, which is a nice natural key. So let's just establish on a C chord that our thumb is going to be back and forth between string five and four and then six and four. And notice in my left hand, I'm moving the ring finger back and forth from the fifth string to the sixth string so I get an alternating bass. using index and middle fingers for the top strings. It's really a matter of choice. There are great players. Doc Watson, Merle Travis used one finger for everything up top. That doesn't work real well for me, but I'm exploring it because in a lot of ways, I can see the value in it. Um, for a long time, I tried to apply the classical technique of three fingers, index, middle, ring. It just doesn't work as well for me. But Primarily index and middle is my best option. So if I'm going to play a high note, I'm going to use my middle finger on the first string and watch, this will be just on the one. So thumb and fingers are together. Or we get a syncopated note, which is in between the thumb notes. alternate middle index one two three and four now notice nice little turnaround walk up from the low G open a middle finger second fret B up to the C so here's the part and I'm gonna walk you through this it's just working with a C chord but with the addition of the pinky on the high G an F6 chord. This is with the little finger down on the second string, third fret, and I am not playing a bar because I need to be able to play a hammer on on the third string. A G, G5 really, in which the pinky is on the second string because this is a melody note, and then a G7. Here's the part. So, walking up from the G, G, A, B, and then two notes together. It's the C chord with the added pinky. The thumb continues. One, two, three, four, and then we do it again. But this time, dropping the pinky so we get the open E string. One, and two, and three, and four. So notice what happens. The melody goes G, E, D. The timing is one, 
two, three, four, one and two and three and. So we've got a couple of notes that come on the off beats there. One, two, three, four. One and two, lift, three and four. And notice how the pinky goes down on that second string at the third fret, which is anticipating our F6. Notice the fingering. Once again, not a bar. Index on the low F, ring finger, D string third fret, middle finger, G string second fret, and there's our pinky. Now, a lot of players, particularly more folk oriented players, would very likely play this with the thumb to get the low F, and that's fine. I'm more comfortable, I feel more secure like this. My thumb's not real long, so I don't do this a whole lot other than occasionally for this fingering. In this case, I'm going with the bar. So, from the C, one and two and three and four. So, thumb, hammer. This is a little tricky because you need to be able to do the hammer on on the, well, the open string on the offbeat and then do the hammer on in time so that your thumb lands on the sixth string at the same moment that the hammer on lands on the third string. And we follow that with a middle finger, well, with a pluck. I'm using the middle finger on the second string, getting that D note. It's relatively straightforward once you get that hammer on. Here it is in context. put on that second string, we go to this G, G5, G variation, six and two together, alternating the thumb with string four, so it's together, off is the open E string, two, three, and four. A little hammer on with the index finger to get from the E up to the F, so we get a G7, two, three, and four. One and two and three and four. Notice off beats. One, two, three and four. One and two and three and four. One, two, three and four. One and two and three and four. And then octave C's. Two, three and four. There's that G again. And then a little turnaround. The D string repeated with the open E, the high F with index finger matched with middle finger B for a bass note, so we get, and then back to where we started. And it just cycles again and again, so it goes like this. little variation there. The hammer-on can come as a pickup. A1. That's what he plays, I'm pretty sure. But it sounds just as good.
So if you feel like you do better getting that bass note in place first and then worrying about the hammer on, I think that's fine. And then the other little variation is sometimes to fill out the middle of a bar with an offbeat like this. Two, three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. And we would really treat that more as accompaniment than melody. It's not... So that note isn't emphasized. So there you have it. It's something to explore. It's a great little tune. It's one of these talking blues kind of tunes. He's telling a story. And the I'm going to go ahead and give you the tab for this one. So the link is down below in the description. And feel free to chime in with your own thoughts on working with the thumb pick. As I said, I'm not at all trying to be an authority. I'm learning how to do this myself. But one of the things that I want you to get from this is the idea that you can very much be your own teacher by looking analytically at what's working and what isn't. And by finding the right type of thumb pick and finding the best place for me to use it, I found a way to make it much more comfortable and then just over time. It's really taken me a good year to get to the point where I'm confident enough to get on a stage and be able to just sing a song without having to think too much about this. So it takes time, it's gonna take everybody time. Bottom line is, though, no matter how long you've been playing, like I said, I've been playing 36 years and teaching for 30, so granted, I know how to pick things apart, but that's something that you can learn how to do, making observations about your own playing and learning how to make adjustments. So check this out. Hope you enjoy the video. Link to the tab is in the description. I'll see you next time.